Hi, this is a friendly tutorial on how to use Data Studio to create a budget report. The example I'm going to use is that of creating a public uh, budget, a government budget, um, but you can extrapolate this use case into any other type of budget report. Step one is uh, I had the person who wanted me to create this report, they it, typically extract a report from some kind of database or they manually enter it into a, an Excel. And so I asked them to give me that spreadsheet that Excel looks something like this. It, it was very, 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 very large and it contained pivot tables. So I got to learn, you know, what kind of information they're trying to view from that. And then I uploaded it in Drive by clicking File Upload. And right when it uploaded, I double clicked it and had it convert to this Google spreadsheet, which by the way, you have unlimited storage of Google spreadsheets in Drive. And so uh, because this size of data was so large, um, I first started by going to datastudio.google.com and you can create a blank report or you can use any of the templates here, but let's say I created a blank report. And what I did is the next step is it, it shows you connectors and I connected it to one of the Google spreadsheet connectors. So you have to select your, there's many, many types of connectors. Um, I did sp spreadsheets, but I quickly learned it was extremely slow how much data there is. And so this was a perfect use case for BigQuery. So I went ahead and I clicked BigQuery. I selected my project and uh, it walks you through the series of, of options once you select it. Um, it will ask you, are these the right fields? And you say connect. And once that is done, you will come to a blank page that looks like this. And this blank page is just your typical canvas. And so what you typically do here is you will select any of these gadgets, whether it's a, um, a circle or a rectangle or an image or text. And then e each of these are your charts. So you can have a time series, bar chart, pie chart. You can do a quick Google search on Data Studio charts and it'll explain each one for you. It was very helpful for me and they have little GIFs on it too. They even have pivot tables. Um, when I actually want to create a chart, I will select the gadget and drag and drop. This is literally an empty, empty canvas. And in order to make it look like this, you can see that I creatively use um, bars and images and then I add in the charts and uh, mess around with the titles and then we have filters. But for this case, once you select a gadget and you put that on your canvas, it's gonna pre-populate it with data, but obviously if this is not the data that you want, you can very easily select what you, what you, what you prefer. So going back to the example of where I'm actually going about and creating my, my chart is let me walk you through a little bit about what, what's in these uh, components. So this whole panel over here will show up once you're actually creating a chart. And um, there's only two parts to it. There's either data or style. Um, I guess you could also count this as a third part because what this does is if, I'm all, if this is already a table and I wanted to convert it into a pie chart right then and there, this is where I would make that modification. This would be for new ones. You could also copy it by just doing control C, control V, or you can also um, use your mouse to do the copy and the paste. And um, in the two columns that exist, there's data. Data is what's gonna allow you to control everything of the data. So this first thing is the data source. And um, as I mentioned, I had to use BigQuery, which has um, 10 terabytes of free data. I have it here for you here. So for you to build a quick proof of concept, basically it's free. And if you have, even if you have a large uh, data set, it's gonna be pretty cheap um, or even free. To get to 10 gigabytes is a lot. And um, I, I exported this spreadsheet as a CSV. I uploaded it based on the BigQuery instructions. I uploaded it into Google Storage uh, and then from there, I um, went into BigQuery and called in that CSV from, from Google Storage. That part I'm not covering in this demo, I'm more covering the Data Studio component. 
Um, this is that second step where I told you when you select your connector BigQuery and then it asks you for what fields, it'll keep popping up whenever you're trying to modify or you go into your data source. So right now, as I mentioned, I clicked here into the data source and it's gonna say, it's gonna take you back to that data source. And these are all the fields that are, it, it saw. Um, I have a lot of text fields and a couple of number fields. If I wanted to blend data, blend is when you actually can mix different types of data sources. That can be from this a same data source or a different data source. There's a, also an article on how to do that. The range, it automatically detected, so the date range. If you don't have a date range, it'll typically just do it based on whatever you have in there. Dimension and metric. Dimension is uh, typically a string field, and that's what you want to be able to filter by. Uh, at a high level, like what is the thing that you're trying to look and you can have multiple of them here so I can have more of these stacked up. And then the actual measurement that we're going to use has to be a number. And so that will be the number that I have here. So right now I'm, I'm looking for um, a budget expense that's called activity and whatever the amount totals up to that individual activity is a posting amount. This is important for rows. Uh, this is going to allow you both to not only visualize how much data you want on your sheet, but it's also long term. If you are um, trying to stay within a budget of cost, it's important to keep this number at a sizable amount because whatever you run the query, so whenever you do a search, uh, it's actually not only just running the search, but opening the, the report, it's running a query. Now, the first time it runs the query and whatever data is there, it'll stay cached. And so it won't keep charging you for the same data it'll display, even for users that are viewing it in other parts. But it will charge you, it'll start counting towards charging you. Uh, and, to, um, and I'm talking about BigQuery specifically. It'll start charging you based on on the number of queries and if you exceed the, the free tier, which... Um, is 10 gigabytes and I, I believe a very large number for the number of queries. So again, for a proof of concept, it's, it's, it's basically free. And so the rows are important to show up whatever the results you, you wanna keep you know, within budget and you can have the summary. This shows you how you wanna sort things if you wanna sort them by ascending or descending by this field and you can have a secondary one, you can, also change the default date range. And then filters are gonna be really important as well. They go hand in hand with the rows per page in terms of making sure that you're only displaying the data that's that's really gonna be used in searching. If you're, if you're gonna have data in here that should not be in here um, and it might show up, I'd probably filter it out so that data doesn't actually show up in here um, or probably clean your CSV before uploading it. And how, um, how the filter works is if you click this little pencil, and by the way, every every icon matters. If you click this little pencil, it means it's editable. This means it's a calendar. It's a date field. This means it's a string field. And this is telling you that it's a cal automatically calculated field to sum. If I wanted to change this to anything else, I can. And from the filter perspective, I can either add a filter, because there were none. I created one. So if I add a filter, um, these are the existing filters that I created, but if I um, am creating a new one, it'll look like this. And so you'll just give it a name. Uh, let me show you an existing one that I have here. You can edit an existing one by clicking the little pencil and saying you give it an explicit name. You would select include or exclude. You give it the, the actual field that you want to use and you can search for it here and then you would use uh, whatever logic you want, and then the actual text that you wanted to search for, and then you would click Save. Now, Save is really those are the only parts you're gonna really click Save this whole time, any change that you're making, it's saving it automatically. So if I click here, um, this is another filter where you can have multiple levels of filters, right? And, um, Style is the second component where it, should let me, it allows you to choose how the data is represented, how pretty, I guess, you would want to make it. You can decide to not have a header or show a header. The times that I don't have a header is, is like, for example, the second one here. Um, I actually hid the headers. So if I select this and I go to style, I, I hid the header because I didn't like, you know, that it was all jumbled up. But and then I just recreated these headers with, with text fields and then this bar, this yellow bar in the back. 
Um, this here shows you how you would like the colors of the table to be. So whether it's the header or you want the lines. Um, let me give you this other example here. So this shows you that the header is yellow. If I wanted to make lines, I could do that of a certain color. Or if I wanted to have every, so, you know, every color on and off, I'd probably use a lighter color. And, and you can play around with that. The table labels, what color you want it, what size you want it, um, and what font you want it. Uh, you can decide to wrap the text. You can show pagination. So pagination would be down here. Now, if, if you have a very explicit row like here, then you don't really need to put pagination. It might just confuse users. And um, you can select the background of this particular chart. Or if you select, um, if you don't select everything, then you can select a theme if you want the whole background to be black or if you want it to be white, et cetera. But you do have to actually click into a component to do something with it. And um, a couple of other gadgets to call out, like I mentioned, is you can put a, you just basically drag and drop and say, hi, this is text. And you can change the background and you can actually have a border shadow and maybe I might want to have something in, maybe it's called source source of report. I'm going to decide to make this in the center. And um, I might want to hyperlink it, right? Let's just make this a little bit bigger. I might hyperlink it to the actual spreadsheet that I, I had it come from. Maybe red's a little too intense, so I can just very quickly change that into softer color. All right. And um, you can also have filters, which are super important. This filter, you can copy this filter, an existing filter, and that's what that's going to change the whole um, filtering of the data. To create a new filter, you could just create a filter here or wherever you like. I've learned as a best practice to keep them on the side. It just makes things more explicit. And you can also change the style and you can change what kind of filter you want. Do you want it by red record count or posting amount or what kind of field do you want it on? Same as a chart. And you can do that for date range too. You can actually have um, date ranging if you want to specify, I want to see data only within this time period. And you can also stylize that. You can undo, redo. You can create more pages, um, if or you can uh, duplicate a page, remove a page, rename a page. You can also copy this whole thing here if you decided to. You could say make a copy, and it'll actually copy the source. Uh, if someone else is in the report that has edit rights with you, they'll show up here. And um, I'm logged in twice, so th therefore that, that's why you see that. And uh, this is where it allows you to show, sorry, to share access. And you can go ahead and do that uh, like you would in, in, a driver, in a drive document. So um, once you're ready with the, with the report, what I recommend is creating a folder. Create a folder. And I did here, so it's called this. And then I would again go into Drive and create a Google site. And that's a free website. You can use this in your Gmail or you can use this in your corporate account um, if you have G Suite. And you just click Google Sites and this lovely thing will show up. And what I've done is I've, I've already changed all of this stuff. I've changed the image. Uh, so I've just made this pretty. I could search for an image which is already publicly shareable, meaning like it has the permissions for it. I could pick a URL, I could select one from Google Drive, or I can upload from. And um, yeah, as I go ahead and I make all this the way that I want it to, the insert section allows me to embed my site. Sorry, my data studio. So in order to embed it, by the way, it's not just going to be the final view. So when you click view, yes, you can see the final view. Yes, you can see all the things that you want to search through. But this is not the URL that you will put in your site because it will give you an error message. 
And so what you actually have to do is click this thing here and you could either select the HTML or you can embed the code. I, I'm sorry, the URL. I prefer to embed the URL and so I say copy to clipboard. And I basically just go into my site, I say embed, I pick the URL, but if I wanted to embed the code, I could as well. But I say code here and I say insert. And go ahead, just blow that up until you want. Note that um, when you do this URL, this embed this report, it's gonna do it for the page that you are on which is nice. So if you have multiple pages and you want to display them separately, um, you would just go ahead and copy the URL of each one so that it ends up looking like this. Sorry, here. And it'll show you both of these, both of these uh, through there in the same process. Just note a couple of things I wanted to call out is that there's three levels of permissions that you have to be mindful in order to make this uh, data public, if this is going to be a public budget report, or if you want to lock it down, you can as well. But you have to be mindful that um, the data source has to be shared with the appropriate people. And in this case, it's BigQuery. So making sure that folks, uh, well, cloud storage, making sure that folks uh, in cloud storage and BigQuery have the appropriate um, accessibility to the source. Data Studio itself, you have to make sure that here um, when you are editing sharing settings, it's right through there. And then the third one is making sure that uh, your site or your website, so this guy over here, also has um, the appropriate settings. Now, if you do all those things, then you will have the appropriate um, lockdown or openness of, of your report. Um, I do strongly recommend to, if, if you're showing this as a proof of concept to somebody, definitely put it in Google Sites. It just makes it um, much more understandable as a, as, a, as a website report. And you can always share the published uh, link of this site um, with anyone that you want to show the report. And then lastly, I haven't tried this, but um, I usually get asked if people can actually print this uh, Data Studio report. So there's, it's not native at this time, but there is a Chrome extension. I haven't tried it out as mentioned, but it, it looks pretty promising. Um, I would highly, I would strongly recommend not to print it as a PDF, right? We're trying to shift more to dynamic data on a, on a site, but there are those use cases where sometimes you need to have that and so therefore, I know that that exists. And then one last thing, um, I called out rows and I called out filters and I called out cleaning out your CSV to make sure that you have the right amount of data in there. But there's one thing I do want to make sure to call out and that's refreshing data. So anything I change in Data Studio will automatically change in my Google site upon me opening the site um, or refreshing the site. But the data, if you change the data source, let's say if I would have picked a Google spreadsheet and not BigQuery, um, and I keep changing the spreadsheet, that's fine, but you actually have to click this little refresh data so that it refreshes, it looks at the spreadsheet again. Um, I believe that's done as a precaution to make sure that you don't get overcharged if you did have very large sums of data and you had it in another system. Um, but for spreadsheets, uh, you will be fine. And so you would just make sure to click that. And that's the end of this demo.